Supreme Court hands a blow to the Trump administration on the citizenship question for the 2020 census. CBS's Natalie Brand explains why the high court said no for now. When do we want it? In a complicated ruling, the Supreme Court has blocked the citizenship question from the 2020 census for now. The high court is sending the issue back to the Commerce Department for technical reasons, saying the agency's explanation for adding the question was inadequate. The justices heard 80 minutes of arguments on the case in April. Administration lawyers called the citizenship question reasonable, even though it has not been a part of the survey since 1950. The government arguing it needed the citizenship information to enforce the Voting Rights Act. Then in early June, the American Civil Liberties Union urged the court to send the census case back to a lower court to reconsider new evidence. New York and Maryland federal judges are looking over documents that allege a now deceased GOP redistricting strategist Thomas Hoffler helped orchestrate the question with the Trump administration to create an electoral advantage for Republicans and non-Hispanic whites. Three lower courts sided with opponents of the citizenship question. They argued millions of people would not respond to the census out of fear the question will be used against them. The lack of responses could affect how federal money is allocated and could determine how many representatives each state gets in Congress and could eventually give Republicans a bigger electoral advantage. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the Supreme Court. Now, Colorado was one of the states involved with this case, arguing against that question. Local activists like Debbie Ortega of Denver Counts say the work is already cut out for them with anti-immigration efforts that have been underway recently, and that citizenship question would have made her job as co-chair for the Complete Count Committee even harder. She also says if everyone isn't counted, it has a detrimental impact on our community. It equates to about $1,500 per person that is counted that comes back to our communities for education, for transportation, for economic development, for so many things that our local communities rely upon that serve everybody. 